Welcome, friends of BrainPower TV. This is another episode with Dr. Echo, and it's my great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Piper Gibson. She's an amazing lady, and I will let her tell you more about how she came to do the amazing work she's doing with kids and parents right now. Yes, thank you. I'm so excited to be joining you today. So I did not start out as Dr. Piper Gibson. I my son was diagnosed with a neurological tick nine years ago, and we tried the conventional approach and nothing was working. A lot of things we were told was just ignore it, he'll grow out of it. We had one doctor tell us he just needs a good spanking. So we were definitely dealing with this, this neurological issue. And at that point, we were frustrated, we were scared, we were overwhelmed. We really, as parents, didn't know what to do. So I went back to school and relearned everything I thought I knew about health and wellness. And so now I specialize in working with families just like mine, those that are scared, frustrated, and overwhelmed with their child's neurodevelopmental diagnosis. So ticks, Tourette's, ADD, ADHD, ASD, SPD, all of OCD, all of those things, anxiety. Um, and then I help them through a 12 to 16 week program called Foundations to Flourish, where I am the chief hand holder and I walk them through all of these steps that I use with my own son to really help them get results, to help them get their child back. And so um, I use a combination of functional lab testing and natural approaches to really help kids get back to feeling amazing and confident. Right. And you know, the important thing is when the kids feel better, what happens to the family? They do better, the right? Family feels better. Everything improves when your kids are feeling their best. Yes, absolutely. And and so today, Dr. Dr. Piper and I are going to be discussing how sugar affects the brain. So can you tell us in a nutshell, or rather explain, how does sugar affect the brain? Yeah, you know, we hear and you're hearing sugar, sugar, sugar. Everybody's overdosing on sugar, too much sugar. Our kids are having juice and cake and all of these processed foods that are really high in sugar. So your brain uses a lot of energy. It is one of the organs that uses a ton of energy in the body and actually uses sugar. But what we know is that you don't have to eat excess sugar, white sugar, processed sugary foods in order to fuel your brain. It can actually really impact your brain negatively when you do that. And so what we're looking at with the brain is that we know your body is going to make that glucose, that sugar that your brain needs from the healthy foods that you eat. And so the negative impacts of sugar really come from that uh, overabundance of the white processed sugars that, that people are eating. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I completely agree. And I like what you said about the fact that your body can still get the, the glucose it needs to run without adding in all these extra things. So can you tell us more about what kinds of foods will, will give the brain the brain food it needs? without? Yeah, you know, absolutely. There's lots of healthy, good things that you can eat for brain food. You know, healthy, healthy meats. Um, so like grass-fed beef, uh, wild caught fish, uh, farm raised or pasture raised poultry, those kinds of things are going to give you proteins. Right. And proteins actually get broken down and make our neurotransmitters. So things like serotonin and dopamine that help us to focus and function and really have our kids feel good, especially when they're going to school. Um, you can eat you know, some good organic fruits, organic vegetables, healthy fats like avocado oil, olive oil, uh, right. coconut oil, omega-3, but really these healthy foods that your body can then use to fuel every other system. So not just your brain, but everything else that goes along with it. Right. Yeah. It's pretty amazing that what you put in your tummy controls and will produce what happens with your brain and your behavior and the way you think and the way you act. It's, I mean, that's a sobering thought. I mean, so it's really, really important for us to focus on what goes in our mouths because what goes in our mouths will not just end there. It directly affects everything, right? That is correct. You know, I tell people it affects every single cell, tissue, organ, and system in the body. So if you are eating foods that are not nutritionally dense, they're void of nutrients, your body wants to continue eating more because it's looking for those nutrients that it needs to fuel its cells, its tissues, its organs, its systems. And so we really need to look towards nutrient dense foods to provide the right kind of fuel for our brain. Right, no, you're absolutely right. So important. 
I have seen that like some kids with that were quote unquote diagnosed with ADHD by like being sent home from school saying they can't they can't focus, they're hyperactive. And the parents are hesitating, but once we make changes in diet, it's like the kid is a whole brand new kid. And it's like, wow, are you serious? So even yeah. I, when I found that out, I was like, wow, I wish I knew this so many years ago, but I'm glad I found out that's how important that link is and for parents and kids to understand. And kids, you can make good choices. Like Dr. Piper has said, like choosing the good things to eat versus the others and same thing with adults making the right choices and you know parents when when you make the right choices your kids are paying attention to what you're eating so you can tell them don't eat this and then you're eating that right it never helps okay, that's very very true and we think about food as a treat so things like sugar oh it's a treat we're gonna get you you got good grades we're gonna get you a donut oh we're gonna go out to lunch you know we're gonna give you you can have a Coke or you can have a soda, but to be honest, those kinds of things actually have more sugar than your child or than you as a child should be eating in an entire day. So one can of Coke for a child is about three days worth of added sugar. So you if you do that, <laughs> if one can of Coke, a can, not one of the bottles, cause that's even more, but a can yeah. of Coke is about three days of added sugar for a child. So if you think that you are using foods as a treat, you are really could be doing more harm than good, especially for the brain, because our brains react to sugar the same way that they do to drugs. So things right. like cocaine and heroin that people are, are using that are illegal, that are horrible for us, right. your brain acts the same way. So if you eat sugar, your brain's like, mm, that's really good. I, I want some more of that. And then you have to keep adding more so your brain is going to give you what's called a dopamine release. Dopamine is that neurotransmitter. It helps you feel good. Mm, that's good. Sugar. And so we're going to have our brain's going to release the dopamine. And then our brain's going to say, oh, well, that was really good. Can I have some more of that sugar? And you want to eat more and more sugar in order to get that same kind of feeling in your brain. So when people say that they are a sugar addict, that's really actually true. Sugar is actually very addicting. Yes. It is. I, I, I like that you pointed out that it's, it's, it does the same, it has the same opioid effect on the brain. Like that's really sober. So if you're walking around like, and yeah, I mean, people, even people that drink a lot of caffeine and they get off of caffeine for two days, it's the same thing. It's like, they're withdrawing. It's like a drug because it, it does. Really, really, yeah. It really is. And you know, sugar, not only is going to be very addictive, but it also does things to us, like gives us brain fog. If, if we have three things that we need to do, we need to do our homework and we need to empty the dishwasher and we need to take out the trash. We may not be able to remember that we need to do those three steps because we have all of this brain fog. It can make us feel depressed, sad, blue, give us anxiety, it can make a lot of people really uh, jittery. Um, and it can give you this kind of energy boost at first and you have an energy crash where you're tired and you don't feel good and you're like, I just want to eat a donut. <laughs> you eat the donut, you feel high for five, yes. 10 minutes and then you crash again and then you eat the next one. Yep. So it's a cycle, right? And it's a cycle we all can break. And hopefully if you're listening that you will at least make one small step to break the cycle somewhere for your family. So, yeah, so what, what, how do you, what do you tell your kids in your practice? How do you get them to agree to make, or how do you make it more palatable, for lack of a better word, for them to make those um, changes right. in what they eat? So I actually do a five-day sugar-free challenge, and I give those directions to all of, of the parents that I work with. And we talk about, these are the ways and the steps that you can actually take the sugar out of, of your diet. And if you are interested, you're watching, you're interested in that five-day sugar-free challenge, I can definitely get you set up with that. So make sure to reach out to me on my website. It's regenerating.health. Um, but we, we work on a five-day sugar-free challenge, getting rid of that extra sugar in the house. And it's actually really important to know where that added sugar is hidden. It's hidden in so many things, in salad dressings, in ketchup, in pasta sauces, in our granola bars, our snack food. So really being educated on where that extra sugar is, how do you ditch it and get it out of your house? And so it's really important to have this kind of guide that's gonna walk you through those steps. Right. So we, we do that, I work with them on that. 
Um, and then we talk about, you know, healthy foods, like, you know, it's okay to have some strawberries and some blueberries or half a cup of grapes. You know, we want to make sure that if you're eating yogurt, which is a healthy option, get the sugar-free option. You can use things like stevia or monk fruit to make that substitution. And I really do caution against using artificial sweeteners. So things like NutraSweet and Splenda and aspartame because they really have negative effects on the brain and the body as well. And so we're looking for those healthy substitutions. And I really want people to have those tools that they need to ditch the sugar and really be able to make those right substitutions so that their kids don't feel like, I need my Coke, I need my my treats. Yeah. Right, and, and, and yeah, you're absolutely like the look of, <laughs> I'm half gone. So, and, and something I tell my parents in my practice is, hey, you know, you can put, you can make the water. I mean, they say the kids don't want to drink water. I'm like, hey, add some fruits to the water instead of the, they have the little packets now that they claim are not sweeteners and, but make, give the water a taste. And I'm like, instead of doing that, cut up some apple and stick it in your water, put it in the fridge for 20 minutes, your water will taste like apples and it will be much better for them to do that than to put packets of uh, artificial stuff like you mentioned in there so yeah that's that's i like that you do the five day challenge so do you find that there's better compliance after they do the challenge and so they are more likely to walk through the program i do i find that they have a lot more information they are, are if you arm people with the education and the information then they are more likely to make those changes and be compliant so i want them to have those tools so that they can go out and make those changes. But they really are because so many people don't realize where all of that extra sugar is hidden. And when you start to go through the pantry and you start to go through the refrigerator and you realize, oh my gosh, all of this stuff has sugar in it, then it's a real eye-opener about how much extra sugar your child's getting. Are they eating ketchup with their chicken nuggets? Extra sugar. Are you putting Thousand Island dressing on your salad with dinner? Extra sugar. Are you having some Kool-Aid? extra sugar so we're looking at all of those sources of of sugar okay okay and so for let me ask the question for the people in the room who are thinking seriously so what am i going to eat the chicken nuggets with now <laughs> so what would you say to them there's actually some really good products out there that don't have the added sugar so look for brands like primal kitchen not a lot of added sugar or any added sugar um mama rouse pasta sauce no added sugar so there's a lot of items out there now with no added sugar, but it's a, it's a matter of reading the labels and knowing how to read the labels. And so they can make changes to your grocery store products at any time and not tell you that they've made the changes. So you really have to make it a habit of taking that quick peek at the label and seeing have they added any additional sugars or have they added artificial sweeteners to it. Right, and, and, and something I wanna say is parents teaching your kids to read the labels. I hear my kids in the store when I'm with them, it's organic or no, this is not okay. I'm like, Shh. but it's important for them to not just know that. No, I mean, it doesn't mean everything has to be organic and that's something we can talk about, but it's important to teach the kids to take a look at what's on the labels because what we are teaching, what we are talking about here is a lifestyle change, not just or we're just doing this as a diet plan and we want you to lose weight. And we, then, we, then you go back to where you were before because that's like a, just a cycle that doesn't help anybody. So what we, are, what we are advocating for is a lifestyle change where you, your child, your children will grow up knowing this as their lifestyle, like a healthy lifestyle. And then it won't be anything strange to them. And then you see, and then they teach, it goes on and on. So, yeah. Don't you agree I mean, that it's important for parents I, I, to take their kids along? Yeah. I do agree with that. And I will tell parents all the time. I mean, I work with children of all age ranges, but the parents who have the younger kids, I tell them, and I really stress with the fact, it is so much easier to change these habits when they are little wow. than when they be 11, 12, or 13, and they're right. stubborn and they're like, well, I don't want to do that. And so really, it's important to teach them these things now. And, and same with me. My kids will come to me in the store. They're teenagers. And I'm like, well, did you read the label? And and we really talk about trying to really avoid those center aisles where we have to read a label. If you grocery shop on those outside aisles, so, right. you know, meat, fruits, the veggies, the produce, the, you know, all of these things and right. avoid those center aisles, you're avoiding the labels and you're avoiding all the processed added sugary garbage for the most part. It's absolutely true. And it's, it's funny how every story is set up like that. 
yeah all the all the not so good stuff are in the middle <laughs> yeah so yeah that's really great and um what was it i said i was gonna come back to i said i was gonna ask you about yes organic so there's that thing of the myth of eating healthy is expensive so i'm on a fixed budget how can i eat healthy what would you say to that parent no that's really not necessarily true Definitely, if you are wanting to eat organic, make sure that you're getting things on sale. But not only that, don't eat the organic stuff in the middle of the store where you have to read the label. Eat the organic stuff on the outside of the store. And if you feel like, okay, the grass-fed beef is a little bit expensive, there are some studies that show that grass-fed beef does have a little bit more omega-3s. It's a little bit more vitamin-rich, but you're still going to get some really good benefits from that meat that is not grass-fed. So you can you can substitute that if you are on a fixed budget, but if you're avoiding getting all of the junk in the middle of the store, it actually makes you have a bigger budget for all of the good stuff on the outside. Yes, and I like that you said, don't get the organics on the inside too, because I remember my kids, of course, there's no marshmallows, right? Like you can't eat marshmallows. Then they bring me the bag of organic marshmallows. I'm like, no, it's still, it's still not good for you, even if it says organic on there. So those are, yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> And it's the same thing for, we have a lot of people doing gluten-free. It is the same thing for gluten-free. The right. gluten-free items in the middle of the store are not any healthier for you than, than the wheat bread that you're getting off the shelf. You want to make sure that you are just avoiding all the junk in the middle. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So thank you. Those, those are some great tips. And um, what would you say to the kids who, okay, so if, so for example, gluten-free, right? And they have to go to school. What, what, what tips would you give them so that they don't feel like they're missing out on, on the so-called good stuff that they see other kids eating? You know, one of the great things is that you can work with your mom and your dad to go to the grocery store with them, pick out those things that are healthy for you to eat and help make your own lunch because that's going to make you feel really proud and really excited that I made my own lunch and I know how to cook. And my sister teaches my nephew. He makes, he's seven. He just turned seven. He makes table side guacamole. He does it all himself. He, he gets out there avocados and all of the things and he makes it. And it's a really great moment for him and it's delicious and it's enjoyable. And so getting your kids and getting your parents involved in making the foods that you are going to be eating makes it that much better. So make sure that you are picking out the things that you are going to enjoy, but also, you know, really looking at you are having the healthiest lunch at school. Yes, absolutely. So we were talking about genes before we got on the air. Is there, do you, have you found in your work that there is, do genes play a part in how people tolerate sugar or any of that? They really do. Um, one of the genes that I look at is called ADA, ADRA, ADAR2A, I cannot speak today. Um, but it is the sugar sensitivity gene. And so we can really actually look at that and see, well, do your kids really have this predisposition to sugar sensitivity? And I will tell you that 99.9% of the kids I do work with have this predisposition to sugar sensitivity. So it's really kind of a cool gene to look at. The yeah. other thing that we can look at is you have on and off switches for inflammation. So your, your body's immune system is very important. We want to be able to have a certain amount of inflammation. When we get sick, when we're exposed to a pathogen, we want to have this inflammation. So we can really have this ability to turn that on, but some kids have a hard time turning it off. And so we know that if they're consuming an overabundance of inflammatory foods like sugar, they are going to have more symptoms like ADHD, um, not being able to focus, the brain fog, energy imbalances, because they have this, the sugar causes the inflammation and then they can't really turn it down. It's like an underlying fire that's burning in their body. So we can actually look at a lot of genes and really refine what, what our kids and, and what we as adults should and shouldn't be eating and what nutrients we really need to fuel our bodies. Right. Wow. That's amazing. That's so powerful though. That it's so tailored that you can we can get the help you need by seeing what it is you're predisposed to. And so it's not so much as 
pointing fingers at the child because I've had parents in my practice who tell the child, are you listening to what the doctor says? She says you're not doing good because you're eating. But then, then I have to turn to the parents and say, well, what are we, how are we grocery shopping? And it's not a matter of pointing fingers. It just has to be the whole family doing this. If one person is doing it, then that means everybody should be doing it, right? Because then it takes away that whole stigma and the labeling of this one child has a problem versus all of you over here don't have a problem. So is that, do you find that you have to do that in your, in your, your practice with your kids? I, I do. And you know, one of the things that I point out to parents is my kid, they're so picky. They love their, whatever it is, their granola bars. They, they love it. They're so picky. And I'm, right. well, you're the parent, you have a checking account. You are buying the food. Don't buy it. Don't have it in the house and they can't eat it. It does change when your child gets a driver's license, let me tell you. But at least my kids, because they're older, have that ability to look at a label and discern what they should and shouldn't be eating. Um, and so I do I do really put a lot of that influence on the parents that they need to realize, you know what? Hey, my, your kid's picky, but you buy the groceries. Don't have it in your house. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So what are some things that parents, other things that parents can do to decrease inflammation in their kids like bellies and in their kids brains number one number one tip stop the sugar ditch the sugar get rid of it um number two would be to really dump those inflammatory foods so i like to ditch and dump um dump those inflammatory foods like the gluten dairy they're both they're really inflammatory and then dial in we want to dial in a really good diet so we want to dial in on those nutrients like omega-3 fatty acids so in fish um things like salmon, uh, wild caught salmon, super high in omega-3 fatty acids, fabulous for inflammation. If your kids won't eat fish, you can actually do it as a supplement. You can do that as well. Um, looking at, you know, making sure they're getting enough exercise, that they're sleeping well. If you don't sleep well, you're, you actually, you know, are causing some issues with your immune system and that inflammation. So you want to make sure that your kids are getting, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours of sleep, depending on their age take away the screens at least an hour before bed. Make sure that your kids are getting out and getting plenty of sunlight, one for vitamin D, um, but two, because it helps them with that sleep-wake cycle. It's called your circadian rhythm. So make sure that they're getting sunlight and 20 minutes of sunlight without sunscreen, it, as long as it's not at high noon in New Mexico, you are, you are good. So make sure that your kids are getting all of those things. Right, yeah, I, I love that you pointed out sleep. I mean, sleep, Things like ADHD could also be called the sleep disorder. I mean, because if the kid doesn't sleep, then they won't, they will be more hyperactive and then it just keeps getting worse from there. So I, I, I know I've read the studies and I've, I've actually seen a difference about in like turning off the Wi-Fi at nighttime. What, what do you say about that? There are some people that are really sensitive to EMFs to the Wi-Fi. And if you think about the fact that your Wi-Fi can go from your living room where your, where your router probably is to your bedroom through your walls. Think about if it can go through those walls, it can easily go through you as well. And it really can impact your sleep. And there are people that are very sensitive to it. So, you know, turning off that Wi-Fi at night is great because it reduces the EMFs, but then kids can also not get on the screens in the middle of the night. <laughs> so there you go. It's a, it's a win. <laughs> Definitely, because there's the blue light that will stimulate the brain and keep the brain awake. So I tell parents, Make sure, especially your teenagers, they pack that food outside the door <laughs> before they go in the bedrooms. Yeah. The other oh, oh, yes. Is, the smart watches. Take, That's so take true. Them off your smart watches. Take them off. Put them, you know, not next to your bed. Put them in the bathroom or put them, you know, in another okay. room. But your smart watches really they track your sleep, but they really can impact your sleep. So that's another thing. You've got it right next to your head. Mm-hmm. That's so true. Yep, I need to add that in there. Oh my God, there's always something to add. <laughs> that you have always, to there's always something. But yeah. Make it back to basics. What, what were we like 200 years ago? We were eating meats, fruits and vegetables. You right. know, we might've had some sugar once a year, we have a birthday cake. The, the studies show that we typically 200 years ago ate about one pound of sugar in a year. And now we eat some ridiculous, like over 200 pounds of sugar a year. Um, so just think about that impact on your health. So go back to basics, meats, fruits, vegetables, getting that sleep, turning off those lights. We used to have candlelight, all of these things that are really going to 
impact your overall health that some of them are really easy to do. Turn off the computer. <laughs> love it. <laughs> yes, turn off the computer. I love that. Yeah, so simple, but yet sometimes so hard, right? <laughs> So, so, um, so can you please tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, absolutely. So you can find me at www.regenerating.health. You can find me at Regenerating Health on Instagram and Facebook. I am also the corporate clinical educator for GX Sciences. We are a, a genomics company. And so, you know, providers, practitioners, anybody that's watching, you can also reach out to me there at GX Sciences. And I would love to connect with you on that. Um, but super easy to find me. If you have questions, if you're looking for my five day sugar challenge, absolutely reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook or my website, and I will get you that as well. And it's a great way to get your whole entire family in, involved. Just do the five day sugar challenge. Yeah, yeah, because there's something about doing something together as a family, right? It's more likely to stick, right? Yeah. Yeah. All the time. You have to have the whole family involved. Yeah, absolutely. Because like you said in the beginning of your video, right? If the kid gets better, the whole family gets better. So yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much for taking your time to come share your amazing knowledge with our listeners and hope you... Tune in to another episode of Brain Power TV. See you next week. Thank you, Piper, again. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye.